Hi there. Welcome to this introduction on film photography in the dark room. And I'm calling this film photography in the dark room because we'll be talking about photographing with film and processing and making prints in the dark room. My name is Tim Hall and I'll be teaching this course. And first, I want to say that although all are welcome to take this course, it's not a course for everyone. Uh, making good prints, fine prints, uh, with film is not an easy or quick task. It takes many years of practice and a lot of patience before you can expect good results. But having said that, if you're interested in learning film photography and you enjoy working in the dark, in the dark room, then um, you should by all means take this class. Now it's not an introductory course. I won't be talking about how to uh, load a camera with film or what camera to buy or what darkroom equipment to buy. Um, there are many books on that subject and I would recommend highly the books written, authored by Ansel Adams. And uh, his material is very well written out and it'll help you for many, many years if you're in the darkroom as a hobbyist, uh, working for many years. There are things in his books that will um, help you for many years to come. Um, but if you have any questions, you can always email me and I'll answer any questions that may arise to the best of my ability. Um, so, um, I have to say that working with film in the dark room takes a lot of time and as I said patience but and it's not easy but anything good takes a lot of effort uh, in the words of uh, Rainer Maria Rilke the famous lyric poet just because something is difficult to do is enough reason to do it because you'll learn more that way Okay, so um, I'm going to be in the background showing um, black and white and color prints that I've made in the past uh, as an illustration of what um, I shoot for when I work in the dark. Okay. What I will impart in these lessons is my shortcut on how to explain quickly, in the shortest amount of time, how I work in a dark room, how I work behind a camera. Uh, in many respects, it contains my trade secrets, having worked in the business for many years. It's my hope that film photography will continue on into the future in spite of the advances made in digital imaging and learning how to work with film will give you many ideas on how to work better in digital photography i also have worked in digital out of necessity because in the business um, the last 10 years i hardly ever got a sheet of film I was always getting files and working with files, but I always refer to my background in film. And that'll come up during a, the course of lesson, like how I color correct and so forth. Um, now, um, like I said, what I'm gonna teach you are a lot of shortcuts. I'm gonna be talking about um, how Ansel Adams very cleverly figured out how to uh, use a system of zones. But rather than do it the way that he, exactly how he did it, I'm gonna do it the way that made sense to me and so therefore I call it a shortcut. Which um, brings up another subject. And I wanna stress this from the very beginning. I'm not trying to teach you how to work like I do. Um, I think that's important to say up front. 
take what you can and go on your own way of, of how you want to work with film or even digital. Um, it's my belief that seeing before you photograph something is um, very helpful when determining how to proceed. There are many steps before you get to the, to the print stage. And if you can see visually what it is you want to achieve, um, it'll determine how you, what camera to use, what film to use, how to process and so forth and so on. So when you take these lessons from me, I hope you can understand what it is I do and why I do what I do do. And then you take that and you apply it to your own um, skills. Um, I didn't uh, parrot what, Ansel, what I learned from Ansel Adams' books. But when he, what he wrote was so clear that it made sense um, to what I had been doing all along. Why some things worked and why some other things didn't work. And so that's what I, I hope you get from these lessons, okay? Um, yeah, take what you can and travel your own road, okay? I started in photography when I was very young. Both my grandfather and my father were photographers. And when my parents bought a house in San Francisco in the Richmond district in 1957, my father had a dark room built in the basement because he was all, already an enthusiast, enthusiastic amateur. And he ventured into photography professionally when we lost the family business, um, which is another story. He already knew how to uh, make photographs, and so he decided to become a professional photographer in 1957. And that year, I was five years old. When I was about eight, he would take me into the dark room and instruct me on how to process prints that he had made the night before, proofs. Um, he'd go on photo shoots, he'd come back, process film, and he'd make these proofs, these little four by five proofs. And I was told to put it in the chemical for so long, move this dress with it, and wash it, so forth and so on. So I was in the dark room when I was pretty young. And before long, I was allowed to use this Rolleiflex camera. And in one evening he showed me how to load the film, how to use a Weston hand meter, gave me three or four rows of film, and I went out the next day and I started to shoot. Um, walking the streets, going to Golden Gate Park, and um, when I came back, he then showed me how to process the film, and eventually how to make my own prints. So I learned the rudiments of darkroom work from my father at a fairly early age. And because I was able to use an enlarger and focus and I could burn and dodge and so forth, I gravitated toward that profession as a part-time worker. In the summers and weekends, I'd go to a photo lab and, and work. And eventually, um, pretty quickly, I started printing color in the darkroom processing in the basket line. And after a while I started meeting with art directors and designers and picking up and delivering work, going back and processing prints. And they would take a Kodachrome transparency and they put it outside uh, in the window and, and let the outside light shine through it and they point out all the detail in the shadow areas and tell me that they want all that detail in their print without losing the, the highlight detail. And so, in the 70s, I ventured into film masking, and I would lower the contrast of transparencies 
in order to make prints that had all this detail in it. And uh, eventually, um, I started to work more and more in that vein, learning how to make a, a really fine print, a fine color print. And so, um, I came up with masking, film masking, and applying what I learned there by the seat of my pants. I didn't study this in school, so um, I really just struggled in the darkroom. And that's why when I eventually I learned how to use a densitometer, because I had taken uh, lessons from Katine, who was showing me how to make dye transfer prints in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, things started to fall in place, and densitometer made a lot more sense. I used it before then uh, for process monitoring, and lab control, and so forth. But, um, and then when I read Ansel Adams' books, it really, everything just kind of fell in place. And I understood why some things worked and some things didn't. Sometimes I'd mask uh, films and print would come out even worse. And it started to make sense to me why. And so that's why I encourage you to take what you learned from me and run with it, okay? This course is gonna be broken down into three sections. And I've thought about uh, how I work for many years. And I've broken it down into three essential lessons. So the first section is gonna be uh, how paper responds to density range. Uh, in a way, I design my negatives uh, around how paper responds to exposure. So we'll be talking about the use of a grayscale and printing it onto paper in the first section. Sounds rather boring, but there's a lot to be learned there. Uh, the second part is going to be an abbreviated um, version of the zone system, how Ansel Adams explains things. But rather than do the film testing the way that he recommends it, um, I'm going to show you how I do it. And hopefully it'll make sense and uh, it'll be faster than you know, spending weeks on film testing. And lastly, it's how to make a fine print incorporating film masking. Film masking is, in short, uh, making a supplementary black and white sheet of film, which when you sandwich it with a negative or a transparency, it lowers the contrast. It uh, helps to dodge perfectly so that you can give a longer exposure without losing detail. So those are the three sections. Um, how paper responds to density range, an abbreviated version, my version of the zone system, and film masking. Okay, so let's get started. Yeah, one more thing before we get started. Um, this course will mainly be dealing with making black and white prints, fine art black and white prints. But certain aspects of color photography will be discussed. This is necessary because the masking materials um, put out by Eastman Kodak were designed for color materials. And so there's, we have to talk about why that came about and how um, color materials use masking films and then how I modify the way I do things to make it applicable to black and white films. Okay. There will also be a certain amount of discussion about graphing of data, um, how you take uh, values measured off of a densitometer and how you plot it on a graph so it makes sense. Um, commonly referred to as HD curves, uh, as devised by Herder and Driffel in 1876. Um, the graphing of your own data is not necessary, but if you understand the tenets of um, Herder and Driffel's ideas, it'll help you to um, come to terms with how you use this 
densitometer uh, measurements. Um, so, in short, this is a fairly technical course, um, but it's very rewarding to um, go through all this effort to make a fine print that, by the way, will last over a thousand years. And a lot of people don't know this, but a silver gelatin print, a real silver gelatin print, pr printed onto fiber-based paper will last hundreds of years. If you're using fresh chemistry and you wash it correctly, um, the image will last longer than probably any other method of uh, reproduction, print reproduction. It lasts longer than oil paint. And this is not something that um, you need to keep in the dark, like the cave drawings that last, last a thousand years. Um, oil paints will chip away and fall apart, but the, a, a silver gelatin image will last thousands of years. Um, so, well worth it to, to take this course. Now, the course will be offered at a minimal charge, uh, the only ex real expense that will come up is if you decide to purchase darkroom equipment, uh, masking materials, masking equipment, and so forth. Uh, then it can get expensive. But of course, I don't even know what to charge yet, but it won't be much. It won't be that much. Okay. All right. Now we can start. Okay.